I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a video lecture for my law and economics seminar about criminal law. And specifically, we're going to talk about the economics of black markets. And so when we talk about black markets, we mean typically the an illegal market um, for contraband. And uh, there's a, you'll hear a lot of policy discussions about this. Some people will even say um, sort of naively that um, that prohibiting something or um, criminalizing a possession of a certain uh, item creates black markets, um, but they haven't really thought through some of the complexities of black markets. And so you know, economics can give us some useful insights for analyzing um, black markets and how and why they work and what works and doesn't work for deterring them. So uh, first of all, keep in mind that um, in modern societies, <clears throat> We usually have black markets for contraband, but you can have black markets for daily necessities. And so, um, so for example, we have, we have a black market for drugs or illegal firearms or uh, stolen items and things like that, uh, stolen credit card numbers and so on in our society. But especially in um, ancient societies or before we had our modern um, sort of uh, narcotics laws, let's say, uh, you would have problems with criminal gangs would hoard or and charge fees for access to food or clean water or roads or things like that. Um, and so it, keep in mind that you can have a very similar um, a phenomenon for a black market for um, that's something that's actually for a legal item if somebody has um, basically cornered exclusive access to it. Um and uh, black markets involve a price premium. <clears throat> and so part, uh, and this is something that's very misunderstood, I think, uh, when people talk about black markets, especially with uh, drug legalization and things like that. Um, the price premium on a black market is partly a risk premium for the seller to offset the risk of going to prison. And so they're going to charge more. If you have to go down a, a dark alley uh, to buy something and you should expect to pay um, a hefty price for it. And part of that is because the person who's selling it to you um, on the black market is taking a big risk that you're an undercover agent or uh, uh, the police, that there's about to be a police raid or something like that, and they could be caught. And so they're going to build that risk into their prices. Um, also, black markets off, often have a captive market, um, which is equivalent to a monopoly or oligopoly in, in terms of pricing. And so... <clears throat> In other words, if you need to buy an item that's illegal, you have limited options about where to get it. And so um, it's and those people know that. And so they can charge you more because you can't just say, well, I'm not going to buy my drugs from you. I'll go to another drug dealer. But there's a lot of search costs and problems. And there's a, a finite number of drug dealers, let's say, in every neighborhood or community. Um, and the same is true with selling illegal weapons or other types of contraband, um, counterfeit items and so on. Um, and now keep in mind that um, the, the captive market part of the price premium is what we would call monopoly rents. So that is profit, um, right? But risk premiums are not profits, right? So that's part of the cost of do, uh, your overhead costs. And this is uh, very misunderstood, right? So if, if part of the elevated price that you are charging, um, let's say you your um, gross revenue is $100,000 a month from selling illegal items, well, a lot of that is not true profit in a sense, but it's actually um, kind of supposedly offsetting the the fact that you're pretty much more likely than you would otherwise be to go to prison and lose everything. And so risk premiums for the sellers are not profits. The monopoly um, part of it is the monopoly rents are, but the risk premium is not in terms of the price markup on the black market. And I want you to think about this uh, for my students. What part of the black market price premium is the risk premium and what part is the captive market premium? Now let's talk about weapons for a second. For weapons, a black market premium raises the cost for criminals. And so think about this. If you have a felony conviction, and so you um, know that if you go to a gun store, you're going to have to do a black background check. 
Um, let's say that you live in one of the few states that has universal background checks, so even private transactions. So you have to find a seller who is willing to illegally sell you a gun, even though you have a felony conviction. Well, you're going to play, pay a black market premium uh, for that firearm. You're going to presumably pay more than if you were <clears throat> able to go to a regular gun store and pass a background check and get the gun. And why? Because the person selling it to you is taking a risk and because they have a captive market. So both of those things are going to call, inflate the price. But think about what happens. There's a, there's sort of a silver lining um, to the black market premium because it means that the would-be criminal can afford fewer weapons or has to buy cheaper weapons, right? So let's assume that you're a criminal and you have a, a finite amount of money, right? If, if you had infinite um, financial resources, presumably you wouldn't be a criminal anymore. You could give up your life of crime and just um, live well for the rest of your days. But instead you have only so much money that you can actually spend on your weapons. And if those weapons are more expensive because you have to acquire them on the black market and there's always a black market premium, it's not going to be cheaper than buying them legally. And that means at the margins, some criminals are not going to be able to afford any and some are going to have to buy fewer and some are going to have to um, buy an inferior quality or smaller um, or lower caliber weapon. <clears throat> Um, also, keep in mind that black market sellers often try to eliminate competition. And so um, if you've thought that you could really make a lot of money if you were selling illegal goods because of the black market premium, you could charge a high price and so forth. Uh, remember that <clears throat> there's a finite market and um, you have a sort of a criminal, uh, some very dangerous people competing with you. And uh, so think about if you were a fan of that Breaking Bad series that was on television uh, some years ago, uh, the intense uh, sort of lethal type of competition between drug dealers. And so that also is a huge risk of being for the black market seller is that they um, are constantly in danger from their competitors, um, threats on their life and so forth. Um, and so that is, uh, and why, do, why is that? Because if you can really be the only seller of a particular type of contraband in a community, then you can, um, then more of your premium that you're able to uh, charge is going to be the monopoly rents, right? The, um, and the transaction costs for buyers to find a seller. They don't have a choice. They have to go to you uh, to get that item. Okay, so let's uh, go a little further. Apart from the risk of getting caught and punished, black market sellers are vulnerable to violence and threats and extortion from their customers, not just their competitors. <clears throat> um, I grew up in a I uh, went to high school in a very safe kind of affluent um, uh, community in Connecticut. And um, uh, when I was, I think a, uh, there was a, a, in high school, I was probably a sophomore, freshman or sophomore. Um, there was a murder in um, kind of the next neighborhood over from uh, mine and kind of up the street and down another street um, with, and someone I rode the bus with every day. Uh, had committed this, um, uh, had basically killed his drug dealer, um, right, uh, during a, a drug deal uh, gone bad. So remember that sellers are are not just vulnerable to arrest. Um, they don't just see uh, risks from, if you're Walter White, your threat of harm is not um, only um, a, a Gus Fring, but it's also your customers who can threaten you or decide that they're going to um, not pay you and just take the goods. They could extort you, um, threaten to tell the police on you and so forth, and you don't have any legal recourse. Um, and so, so this means that black market sellers have to invest a lot in um, extra self-defense and that costs and that cuts into your profits. So if you have to have armed security guards, if you have to have safes, um, to store your cash and your contraband um, and hideouts and um, things like that. All of that eats into your profits. Um, and there's an example, uh, a famous example of a study that was done of um, uh, inner city um, uh, suppliers of weapons and ammunition to st uh, criminal street gangs. And uh, the economists that studied this found that um, there were separate people who would sell guns um, and ammunition on the black market. You, it was uh, simply too risky 
to sell um, guns and ammo um, at the same time because your customers, once they completed the transaction, could just um, hold you up and take the rest of your inventory. And so, um, so the tendency on for black markets for weapons is the people who sell guns do not have any ammunition and don't sell ammunition and sell unloaded guns. And the people who sell ammunition don't have guns. They are a sep you have to go to separate weapons and ammunition sellers on the black market. Um, a monopolist in the black market. So let's say that you're the winner, you're Walter White, and you're the last man standing in a competition um, to be the drug dealer in your community. You may try to eliminate alternatives as well. <laughs> so for example, preventing or punishing individuals who try to bypass a black market by let's say stealing, uh, uh, getting, making their own drugs or stealing weapons for themselves. Um, and so this is not just competition, but you're also trying to prevent your customers uh, from uh, turning to sort of do-it-yourself activities. So monopolists may also punish or prevent incompetent criminals who attract police attention, right? So if there's uh, criminals who are, um, are going to make a lot of noise or do reckless things and bring a lot of attention from law enforcement, Another part of your cost of doing business is to um, prevent them or eliminate them or have them uh, know that they need to keep in line. Now, keep in mind that there's a complex price relationship between legal markets and black markets. Um, increases in black market price can cause increases in rel the related market for legal alternatives. Um, so, for example, if narcotic, the price of a uh, popular narcotics or recreational drugs goes up, um, then legal alternatives that you can get at your pharmacy um, or prescription drugs and, and so forth, also the price may go up. Um, the legal, or sometimes you have legal sources that are basically supplying the uh, back door uh, to the black market. And so, uh, think about this if you're a student. The complex relationship. Um, think about, uh, for example, guns selling um, uh, weapons to uh, to street gangs. So, if the street price of a gun um, doubles, right, of a black market uh, gun sold on the black market, um, that means that uh, the people who are selling to lawful um, uh, legal gun stores are going to see an increase in demand for their guns because there are people who are buying them who, whether directly or through several uh, chains of transactions, are indirectly uh, supplying a, a um, demand on the black market where they can uh, double their money. And so this uh, an increase in a black market price for an item that is also sold on the legal market um, will cr uh, to basically create an increase in demand for the legal item as well. And that can, uh, in theory, as demand goes up, prices go up. Um, also keep in mind that increases in legal market prices may increase prices on the black market. So um, if you think about, for example, um, let's say that we had a 100% tax on firearms. So if a gun that sells for $500 right now, it, now you're also going to pay $500 in taxes. So it's going to be a total of $1,000. Well, the people who are selling on the black market now know... <clears throat> Buying a, a gun legally costs twice as much. And so there will be some uh, a similar increase in the black market price as well. Now, uh, this cuts it cuts a number of ways, right? So uh, remember that if you increase the um, price on the legal market with a very high tax, you inconvenience the law-abiding citizens, right, who were never going to commit a crime, and now they have to pay this enormous tax. Um, on that item. On the other hand, there could be a benefit because it, your tax, your 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 steep excise tax on a particular item, um, it could uh, double prices on the black market for that item, and that is go going to price some criminals um, out of the market. Right? It's just going to be so. If you imagine a um, a young person, let's say a high school dropout who is starting their life of crime and they really don't have much much money and so forth. If um, if the black market gun that they were hoping to buy now costs twice as much, it's going to take them longer to save up for it, or they might not be able to get it at all, or they can uh, they it can only afford a fewer weapons, and so forth. So keep in mind that this is a complicated relationship that has not been studied very well. Okay, so now let's talk about um, speculators.
And let's take an, a previously legal item that we're now going to ban. This could be a fairly harmless thing like incandescent light bulbs, um, or it could be uh, something kind of uh, questionable like um, bump stocks or um, uh, ghost guns or right do, do it yourself uh, gun assembly, assemble at home gun kits and so forth. Well, once an item has um, uh, been banned, uh, then we might, um, if we're banning the new sale, so let's say we ban a few years ago, they banned the sale of it, um, most incandescent light bulbs for the home. Um, or severely limited at this. So there were speculators who had investment income ready and they bought these up, right? They bought up the existing supply knowing that there were the stores weren't going to be restocked with it and they would hoard it so that they could drive up the black market uh, price or secondary price um, even more. So uh, keep in mind that black markets and even gray markets, so the resale for an item that you can't make or produce. So we let's say we've um, banned the production of new machine guns um, so in the country, but you can still own um, a, a, a machine gun that existed, was in circulation before the ban went into effect. So we grandfathered in the existing items and we just prohibit the manufacture and sale of new items of a certain particular product. Well, what happens is speculate people with a lot of investment income, speculators will buy that up and then they have an incentive to kind of hoard it so that they can create a limited supply and then drive up the um, uh, resale price even more, whether the item is legal or not. And this extra price premium um, which is going to involve the black market risk premium if it's illegal um, or a um, gray market, a secondary market, legal market um, uh, uh, premium, a captive market premium plus the hoarder's premium will again price out those who are in poverty first. Um, Keep in mind that uh, several years ago, there was a popular, a best-selling book and then a movie made uh, called Freakonomics. And one of the uh, most retold or often told aspects of uh, chapters in Freakonomics was the observation that a lot of low-level drug dealers were making less than minimum wage and lived with their parents. The appeal, of, if you're saying, why do people do it if they're making less than they would at McDonald's? Um, or a fast food restaurant, the idea was that you work your way up and someday become the cartel leader or the kingpin or something like that. But the fact is, it's not really lucrative at all as an entry-level position. And that concludes my little video about the law and economics of black markets.